Okay everybody, D-Lab is going to give you what you've been asking for. This video will show you, in simple steps, how to test a guitar amp using an audio generator, a dummy load, and watching the output on an oscilloscope. Here we go. Alright, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step procedure. There's a lot of different things here to show. So I obviously cannot show you operating these controls and the scope at the same time. So I have a separate camera that will monitor that function. So I have a straightforward procedure for you guys to follow. And if you do this, you'll have no issues testing guitar amps with an oscilloscope and you don't even have to know how to use that scope after I show you what you need to do. First thing, of course, is you want to warm up your equipment. Everything's been out here idling for about a half hour. All right, let's get into the procedure. All right, so we are going to use an audio generator for the input. So that is going to feed into the amplifier. Then I have an audio dummy load, which is nothing more than a resistor that is hooked up to simulate the speaker. This dummy load also has an output for the oscilloscope. It is actually a direct connection to the speaker terminals. Just out of convenience, it has a BNC cable that plugs in to my scope. So first thing we're going to do is set up the input from the audio generator. So the audio generator is going to be set for 1 kilohertz at 150 millivolts output. So if I take my scope lead, plug it in to the generator, take my divisions down to 50 millivolts per division, you see I have approximately three divisions, which is 150. And you can adjust that. I really would not go under 100 millivolts because you may have too less a signal and too much noise and it could fool you. So somewhere between 150 to 200 millivolts is good. All right, now I'm going to take a scope. I'm going to connect it back to the dummy load. So I'm reconnected the way I was originally. So the audio generator now is providing one kilohertz output at 150 millivolts, which we verified on the scope. Now we're going to put the oscilloscope at 2 volts per division. The time is going to be set for 0.5 milliseconds. That's all you need to do for the next test. Make sure your coupling is at AC. Alright, so at this point we are going to adjust the volume of the amplifier and you should see the sine wave as this amplifier is amplifying the audio coming from the generator. So here we go. And there is the sine wave output. So the audio generator is going to the input. Amplifier is doing its thing, sending it out the speaker jack into the dummy load. And then the dummy load is being monitored by the scope. So this is the actual signal going to the speaker. I would highly recommend if you guys do this test that you do not use a speaker. Use an audio dummy load because you will find there is interactance between a speaker and your test setup and it can make you think something's wrong. It's best to deadhead it into the dummy load. Plus, you don't have the irritating one kilohertz tone blasting your eardrums out while you're trying to do the test. So now we know we have a signal. Let's check the reverb function. So if I were to bring up a signal, bring up my reverb, you'll see the sine wave didn't do much, but now if you swing your frequency back and forth, you see the reverb action, okay? So that verifies the function of the reverb. If I return that down and bring up my intensity now for the tremolo, you're gonna see the oscillation of the tremolo. If I adjust the speed, you can see that is also working fine. So now you have just verified all the functions of your amplifier using the audio generator, the dummy load, and a scope. If you needed to go further into troubleshooting, you could increase your sensitivity. So let's say 0.2 millivolts now per division. And you can go behind and tap on tubes and look for microphonics. So that's all there is to it for a simple test of an amplifier monitoring on an oscilloscope. One note on the audio generator. Do not use a grounded audio generator. If you do, you're going to induce hum. 
because the generator is grounded here and your amp is grounded here and you'll get ground loops and you'll have this uncontrollable hum and you'll think there's something wrong with that amplifier so make sure that your audio generator is either battery powered or isolated from ground so that's the end of the test if you guys have any questions you can find my email information on dlabelectronics.com hope this is good information for you